What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Before we get started, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Ring that bell so you're notified for your favorite team's preview video. Today we have a 2023 season preview for the BYU Cougars. So 2022 is a roller coaster of a year. Depending on who you listen to, there's a good chance that quarterback Jaron Hall was playing through injury. That played a major role in their lack of success in the middle of the year when they lost four straight games. Hall is now gone, but coach Kalani Sataki went out and got quarterback Keaton Slovis from Pitt. That tells me one of two things. Either coach Sataki thinks this roster is good enough with a solid quarterback to battle in the Big 12, or the quarterback room and roster is bad enough where Slovis has to keep them afloat. Alongside Slovis in the backfield, you have running back Aiden Robbins transferring in. They lost Puka Nukua out at receiver, who is one of the more underrated players in college football. You have Keanu Hill and Cody Epps stepping in and try to replace that production. Even though some talented guys are returning, they're still somewhat unproven and have very little experience. The receiver core is definitely not where Coach Sataki wanted it headed into the summer. But up front on the offensive line, the Cougars have one of the best players in all of college football. Former five-star Kingsley Suamatia will anchor a good unit up front. Center Connor Pay is also returning, and they're adding transfers Paul Maley and Ian Fitzgerald, who figured to find a starting role. Overall, like I said, it's really a mystery on how to feel about this group on offense, but let's flip it over to the defensive side of the ball. Brand new would be an understatement for the defensive personnel in 2023. Both the staff and roster will be experiencing a lot of change, and Coach Sataki fired multiple defensive coaches after allowing over 30 points per game. So they have a new defensive coordinator in Jay Hill that expects to have a quicker and bigger group of guys. BYU last year got pushed around up front on defense, Notre Dame, Oregon, and Arkansas ran at will on this defense with very little resistance. They're adding transfers Isaiah Begna and Jackson Cravens to bolster the front line. And they also returned Tyler Beatty and Caden Hawes. And now those two guys can be playing knowing they have some depth behind them. Last season, there's just two or three guys up front. Whenever they subbed, it was a nightmare on the defensive front. But Max Tooley is another guy that returns and has a lot of upside. Very versatile player who had three interceptions last year, but can also get after the passer. Leading tackler Ben Bywater returns at linebacker, and the entire defense will have to rally around him. At safety, they return three starters to give a solid back end on the defense. And I would say just like the offense, the defense will have a lot of unknowns come week one, and we'll just have to wait and see if the group has improved or not in the offseason. And to end the video, let's just take a quick look at their schedule and set some realistic expectations for BYU. All right, so they start out with Sam Houston, Southern Utah, on the road at Arkansas, on the road at Kansas, then they play Cincinnati before their bye week, followed by TCU, Texas Tech, Texas, West Virginia, Iowa State, Oklahoma, and then they end the year at Oklahoma State. So in addition to joining the Big 12, they also added Arkansas in the non-conference after losing 52-35 to a year ago in that game. They'll gain some confidence and momentum in weeks one and two, obviously, to I'd say easily winnable games. Same Houston, Southern Utah are going to be huge favorites. But they have a very difficult three-game stretch traveling to TCU, hosting Texas Tech, and going to Austin to play the Longhorns. I think they'll have to win one of those games if they want to make a bowl game. They'll play teams this year who will struggle on offense, but just how much will BYU be able to score? So my expectation, I did a floor and a ceiling. I'd put the floor at 5-7 and seven or 6-6 six and six for this group. Those first two games being Sam Houston and Southern Utah makes it hard to set the ceiling any lower than five wins. The ceiling has to be 8-4 and four or 9-3 and three in my opinion. That three-game stretch I talked about earlier will dictate whether or not they do meet the ceiling and make a bowl game. All in all, I'm excited to see how things pan out for BYU this year. And with that being said, let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments, what their record will be. And that's going to do it for today's video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Good luck to the Cougars this year. Hope you all have a good day, and I'll catch you in the next one.